Hey guys, in this video we're going to be integrating Smart AI with Survival Game Kit V2. I'm going to be using Unreal Engine 5 in this video, but if you're using Unreal Engine 4, you can still follow along with this video just fine. So to get started, I've got my Survival Game Kit V2 project open, and I've also got my Smart AI project open. So we're going to head over to our Smart AI project, right click the Smart AI folder, we're going to go down to Migrate, and we're going to select OK. Then we're going to find our Survival Game Kit project, so mine is on my desktop, so I'm just going to go to there. Then go to Content, and we're going to hit Select Folder. Once that's copied, it may say that some files were not copied. Don't worry about that, that's fine. We can now head over to our Survival Game Kit project again. So now we're in our Survival Game Kit project, we have our Smart AI folder here. Now we're going to go over to the Edit, Project Settings, and we're going to search for EQS, and we want to tick on the Allow Controllers as EQS tick that on. Then we're going to go to the collision category down here and we're going to create a new object channel. This is going to be called trigger with a capital T and we're going to set default response to ignore. Hit accept. Then a new trace channel and this will be called cover with a capital C and the default response is block. Then hit accept. Next we need to open up the presets but there's currently a bug where you can't scroll down on here so what we need to do is just close both the object channels and trace channels so we can see all our presets. So we're going to start with overlap all, we'll double click it and in here we want to tick cover to ignore then hit accept then do the same thing in overlap all dynamic, tick uh, ignore for cover and hit accept. Next we're going to go to pawn and we want to tick ignore for cover in here as well and then hit accept. Next, click the character mesh, and we want to set this to ignore cover as well. Then we're going to do the same thing for invisible wall. We want this to ignore cover, hit accept, and the same thing for invisible wall dynamic. We want this to also ignore cover. And then do the same thing with trigger. We want this to ignore cover. Then lastly, we'll go to world item, set this to ignore cover. Dead player capsule, this needs to be ignore cover. Then the dead player mesh, ignore cover, and the build preview also ignore cover, like that. So now that we've done that, we can close our project settings. We're going to go into Smart AI and we're going to search for Smart AI Component, and we'll open that up. This might take a second to load. And I'll just bring it over to my other screen, like that. And in the class defaults, we're going to search for Trace. And here we want to make sure cover trace channel is set to cover and attack trace channel is set to weapon like that. Then we're going to go back to the content browser here and we're going to search for EQS and we're going to open up the range attack. We'll select this no, uh, node here and we want to go to trace data, trace channel and this needs to be changed to weapon like that. And then we can save it. Then we're going to go back to the content browser we're going to search for spawn and, and this is inside our smart AI folder. We want to open up AI spawning volume. We're going to select the proximity activation sphere, scroll down to the collision preset. We're going to tick ignore for everything apart from pawn, which we want to overlap. And we'll set the object type to trigger like that. We're going to do exactly the same thing for proximity deactivation sphere. We'll set it to ignore, tick overlap for pawn and set the object type to trigger. Then we'll compile and save this. And we're going to go back to our content browser and we want to open up the AI spawn point. And we're going to do exactly the same thing in here. Select the activation sphere, scroll down to the collision settings here, tick ignore for all, then set pawn to overlap and the object type to the trigger. And then the same thing in deactivation sphere. We want to set this to trigger, ignore all, and then overlap for pawn. Then we can compile and save this, and we're gonna go back to our Smart AI component. So in the content browser, just smart search for Smart AI component, and we'll, uh, we'll open that back up. And in here, we can compile to get rid of this warning. And we're gonna search for, in the class defaults, the collision, like, oh, there we go. We want the dead AI capsule collision and dead AI mesh collision. We're gonna change this to dead player capsule, spelled exactly like I have here, oh, without the I, so it should look like this, and then we want dead player mesh, spelled exactly like that. 
Now we're going to go back to the content browser and we're actually going to select the survival game kit folder. We'll search for master character. We'll open this up and in the components we're going to click add and we're going to search for the player activator like that. We'll compile and then we're going to go class defaults, search for tag. Then we're going to add two new tags and this is important. The first tag will be AI in capitals and the second tag will be player with the P capitalized. And then we'll compile and save this. Now we're gonna go back to the content browser now. We'll get rid of this search and we're gonna to go to the Smart AI folder. And I'm just gonna make my content browser a little bigger here. We'll go to Blueprints and we're going to move the AI Manager Blueprint here. We're gonna select it and drag it into the Survival Game Kit V2 folder. Uh, let go and do Move here. And this will bring up a window and it'll move that to there. Then we're going to right click the content folder, do fix up redirectors in folder, give it a second. Then we'll go back to smart AI, blueprints, we'll scroll down and we want to find the BP AI manager interface. We'll do exactly the same thing, we're just going to drag this into the survival game kit v2, move here. This might take a little bit. And then if we go to our survival game kit, you can see we've got both our AI manager and our AI manager interface inside our survival game kit folder. Now that step is important because if you don't do that, you can get some crash problems in Unreal Engine 5. So make sure you have done that. Next, we're gonna to go to the AI folder and search for GM and open up the AI example game mode. And in here, we're just gonna select these nodes and do control C. Then we'll go back to the content browser, select the survival game kit folder, and we're gonna search for game mode, open up SGK game mode, and go to event graph, begin play, and paste in those nodes we just copied. And we're gonna connect them up to the end here. So we'll connect them up to spawn resource manager. Then we're gonna right click AI manager variable and do create variable AI manager. Then we'll compile again. Next, we're going to go over to class settings and under implemented interfaces, click add and search for AI manager. And we want the AI manager interface. Then we'll compile, go down to interfaces, double click return AI manager, get the new AI manager variable we just created, plug that into the return node, then go to return AI manager settings, get the AI manager variable again, drag out and search for AI optimization. And we want get AI optimization and we'll plug that into the return node. Then we're gonna compile and save, then head back to the content browser and we're gonna search for master range and we want the master range weapon, open that up. Go to functions and create a new function and call it aimed look at, like that. Now we're gonna go back to, or we'll compile first, we'll go back to the content browser, search for player inventory and open up player inventory. In here, we'll search for interaction math and we'll open up this function and we're going to copy all of these nodes here like this and these ones up here as well. Do control C. Then we're going to go back to the master range weapon and we're going to paste these in here like this. Next, we're going to right click the current camera and do create variable and we'll do the same thing with current spring arm, do create variable. Next, from the input node here, we're gonna drag out and do switch has authority. From the authority pin, we wanna drag out and do an if node. And then we wanna do the condition to be get aimed, because we only want this code to run when we're aimed. And then we can move this over here. Then we're gonna right click and search for get character component. Then we'll right click it and do convert to get valid get, connect this up to true like that. And we'll move it back a bit so we've got more space. Drag out from the character component and search for get camera view. And we'll connect the is valid up to our SGK character here. Now we're gonna drag out from the SGK character and search for camera. And we want SGK character camera. And we'll move this back so we've got a bit more space. We'll connect this up to the is valid. We're gonna take the camera view, plug that into camera type, and then we'll drag these back a bit further. We'll drag out from current camera and do set current camera. And do the same with current spring arm, drag out set current spring arm. And then we'll connect 
the output of the current spring arm to these two get nodes here. So this section should look, if I uh, make it a little bit bigger, should look like this. Then we're going to drag out from is valid and we're going to search for a line trace. We want line trace by channel. We'll connect the start node here to start and the end to end like that. And going down here, we're going to delete the interaction distance here and we'll delete camera view as well. We'll take the camera view from current component or sorry, camera uh, character component. And we want to plug this into the select node here. And now down here is how far um, when your character aims, AI will notice that. So you can set this to whatever you like. I'm just going to set it to say uh, 10 meters, which is a thousand like that. So if I aim at an AI and it's within 10 meters of my character, that AI will react to being aimed at, assuming they have that reaction set up. Then we're going to drag out from the return value, do an if node, and we'll break the hit result. We'll make this bigger, drag out from hit actor and search for actor aim focus. Then for the instigator, we want the SGK character. So we'll just copy this node here, paste it over here. If we right click it, we should be able to do convert to pure get, and then we'll just plug that in there. And then we want to make sure that trace channel is set to weapon as well. Next, we want to actually run this event. So we're going to go to the event graph and in here we want to find the per frame and we'll just move these nodes out of the way. And then we want to get our aimed look at and connect it up here like that. And we'll compile and save now. Next, we're going to go over to the smart AI component. And in here, we're going to search for melee check. We'll open up melee collision check. And in here, find the apply damage node. Then we're going to drag out from hit actor and do SGK damage. We'll create the damage node here. And we're going to drag out from the multiplies node, plug that into base damage. Then we'll drag out from AI controller, plug that into event instigator, AI character, damage causer. And we'll delete the apply damage node. Then we're going to drag out from our is hitbox and search for is SGK hitbox. Then take the bone name, plug that into bone name on our SGK is hitbox, connect this up to SGK damage, and then SGK damage up to the multicast node here. We'll move this back down here. And then lastly, we take the hitbox from our SGK is hitbox node, plug that into hitbox here. So it should look like this. Now we're going to go do the same thing in the ranged attack function. So we'll search for range attack and we'll go to that function. And there's two of them in here, so we need to find the apply damage, and I've gone for the one that's here. We'll go to zoom in here, and we're going to drag out from this pin here, because this is the damaged actor. We'll search for SGK uh, damage, create that node, and like before, drag out from the float here and plug it into base damage. And we'll drag the AI controller into event instigator, damage causer into AI character, and we'll delete the apply damage node. And we're going to drag out and do is SGK hitbox. And we need the hitbox or the bone name. So we'll drag backwards all the way back here to the break node here. Plug that into hit bone name. And we'll come back here, take the hitbox, plug it into the hitbox here, and then plug the execution pin up to SGK is hitbox. So it should look like this. And then there is a second one in this blueprint. So if I just look around, I believe this is it. And we're going to do the same thing here. So we'll drag out from the hit actor here and we'll drag it back here. So it's for SGK damage, create that node again, drag out from our multiplies node, plug it into base damage, and we'll take the AI controller into event instigator, AI character into damage causer. Then we'll delete our apply damage and move our damage node down here, connect it up to the rest of the code here. And we'll drag out from is hitbox, search for is SGK hitbox. Then we need the bone name, so we'll drag back to the break node here, plug it into hit bone name, and then hitbox into hitbox. And remember to connect these two nodes up here. Next, we're going to go back to the content browser. We'll just compile and save this before we do. This might take a sec, so we'll just let it do its thing. Then we'll go to the content browser and in the smart AI folder, we want to search for AI holdable. We'll just search for hold 
Holdable, like that. We want to open up AI Master Holdable. And in here, we want to go to Combat, and then we'll go to the Melee here. And we'll find the Damage node in here. So in here, like we've done before, drag out from Hit Actor, SGK, Damage, and we'll create that node. Then we'll take the AI character, plug this into Damage Causer. We'll delete the Apply Damage node, move this one down here. We'll plug the uh, damage here into base damage, move it down a little bit. And then we'll drag out from is hitbox and search for is SGK hitbox. Plug the bone name into the bone name variable and then hitbox into the hitbox option here. And then don't forget to connect up to our damage node and also after our damage node here. Now we'll go back to the content browser and again in the smart AI folder, search for uh, master projectile, open that up. And in here, we want to find the damage node, which is here. And we're going to, like before, drag out from other actor, search for SGK damage, and we'll create, create that node. Drag out from the node here, plug that into base damage. Then we want to take other actor, plug, uh, sorry, not other actor, we want to take owner, plug that into damage causer, and we'll delete our apply damage node now. We'll drag out from is hitbox, search for is SGK hitbox. Plug bone name into this pink pin over here. And we'll plug the out hitbox into the damage node. Connect this up to our SGK is hitbox. And then don't forget to connect this back up to the rest of the code here. And then we have one more left to do. So we'll just compile this, go back to the content browser and search for turret. And we'll open up the turret AI component. And in here, we want to find the turret fire and there should be a damage node in here, just here. And we're gonna, again, uh, drag out from the hit actor over here. Search for SGK damage, create that node. Drag out from the damage value here, plug that into base damage. We want AI turret to go into the damage causer. Then we'll delete our damage node here. And we'll drag out from is hitbox, search for is SGK hitbox. And we want to get the bone name, and that's going to plug into the break node over here. Then hitbox into the hitbox pin, and we'll connect the execution pin up to the damage node here. And then don't forget to connect the end up to the code here. Now we're going to go to our AI master character. So we'll compile this blueprint, go back to the content browser, and search for master character in our AI folder. Open up the master AI character. And in here, we're going to go to class settings, then to implemented interfaces, go add, search for damage, and we want SGK damage interface, and then we'll compile. Then in the event graph, we're going to right click and search for uh, event damage. We want the event SGK damage, like that. And then we're gonna get the AI component, drag that in and search for damage taken. And we want AI damage taken. We'll connect this up to the SGK damage, plug base damage into damage, and then damage causer into damage causer. That's really important. Don't forget to connect that up. Next, we need to go back to our SGK master character. So we'll just compile our master AI character here. We'll go back to the survival game kit project. And we're gonna search for, or we can just search for master character, go to SGK master character, class defaults, and in here, we'll get rid of that search. And we want to go to the interfaces drop down here, implemented interfaces, do add, and we want to search for the AI interface. And we'll click that to add it, then compile. Then in our interfaces drop down here, we want to find the AI is dead, double click that. And we'll drag this out. We want to search for get player inventory, like that. Right click it, do convert to get to valid get. Plug this in here. And we'll copy and paste the return node, plug this into not valid and leave this ticked off. Then at the top here, we'll drag out and do get current uh, health. And it's there. If yours doesn't show up, you can untick context sensitive and it should show up. So do get current health. Then we'll drag out from this to greater than. And we want to make sure it's greater than one. Plug this into dead and then connect this up to is valid. So it should look like this. Now we're going to go back to the player inventory component. So back to the content browser, search for player inventory, and that's in the SGK uh, folder. Open that up. 
And in here, we're going to create a new variable. So we'll do add variable. We're going to call this attacked actor. And we're going to set the variable type to actor. And it's down here, object reference, like that. And we'll compile. Next, we need to go back to the content browser. Again, in the survival game kit folder, we're going to search for master weapon. And we want the BP master weapon. Then in here, we want to go to apply here actor damage. Open that up. We'll zoom in to this point here. We're going to copy these nodes, paste them up here. Take the input, plug this into the true pin here. False, we'll just plug back into here. And then we want to do get player inventory. From that, we want to drag out and do set attacked actor. Plug this into true and then the output here back into the branch. And then we just copy this hit actor pin or a variable, paste it here, plug that into attacked actor, and then we can compile. Once that's done, we can go back to our SGK must character. So I'll just search for SGK master character. And in here, we want to find the attack actor attack target and double click that. Move this back, do get player inventory, right click it and do convert to valid get. Connect this up here. Drag out from here and do get attacked actor. And we want to plug that into the return node and then the return node into is valid. And then we'll just copy the return node, plug that into is not valid. And then we can compile. Now I actually made a small mistake in the AI is dead. If we open that up, this needs to be ticked on. And I've also used the wrong node here. We want to delete that and do drag out and do less than. So we want less than one. And then we want to plug that into dead like that and compile. Next, we need to go to the character component. So go to the survival game kit folder, search for character component, open that up. And in here, search for start. Then we want start destroy dead character timer in here. Then we're going to drag this node out of the way. Drag S from the SGK character and do cast to SGK master character. Now, if you're using a custom character for uh, the SGK character, you will need to cast to that. But most people will be using the SGK master character. So we'll drag out from here and search for uh, player inventory. Do set. Connect this up to the pin on our is valid node. And don't forget to plug this into the set actor tick enabled like that. Um, and we're going to leave this blank and then we can pull and save. Then we're going to go to the master projectile. So again, in survival uh, game kit, we're going to search for master projectile. We want to open up the BP master projectile and in here find the top SGK damage node. And we want to take the get owner pin return value, plug that into damage causer. That's really important. So make sure it looks like this and then compile. Then we're going to go back to the content browser, search for zone, and that's in the survival game kit project folder as well. Open up damage zone. And in here, we want to go to damage and open up the damage overlapping actors function. You can see I'm already inside it. And here we want to drag out from damage causer and do self like that and compile and save. So now we are ready to test our AI. Now, one thing you need to make sure, uh, I'll make my viewport a bit bigger, is the level must have a nav mesh bound. So if you hit P, you should see this green outline. That's where the AI can navigate. If that's not there, then you need to add a nav mesh bounds volume. Um, you can find that in the drop down here, go down to volumes, and it's the top option here. You can drag it in and then you can resize it to uh, fit in your whole level. The uh, survival game kit level already comes with one, so we don't need to do that. Now we can drag an AI into our level. So I'll search for say a zombie and we need to do that in the smart AI folder. We'll scroll down, find the BP zombie, drop him in. And now we can test this out. So we'll hit play an editor and I will run over to the AI, see if he chases me. Let's get his attention. And there we go. You can see he's actually trying to hit me. If he hits me, he damages me. We'll go hold an ax and we'll attack him. You see that he's actually reacting to my hits. Um, and this axe doesn't do much damage, so this might take a while, but there we go. We've killed him, he's died, and the collision's all working correctly as well. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below.